All right, this video is to show you how you can do a practice color wheel for your first color wheel assignment. So this is getting you ready uh, to be able to mix colors and uh, we're gonna be making your own color wheel design for your final project. So this is getting you ready to do that. So you're gonna be making a basic color wheel in your sketchbook first, um, following the color wheel chart on the card that I gave you guys to save. You are going to need your paintbrushes, your watercolor palette, your sketchbook, your card, uh, your cup of water, and some paper towel to start. So, I already did a practice. I kind of goofed up right there, so that uh, that kind of prepared me to be able to teach you guys how you go ahead and mix these up. Even I make mistakes too sometimes. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my card here so I can use it as a guide. So we're gonna make it in kind of a circle formation, but we need to start with these colors that are kind of in the corners of a triangle. Those are the primary colors. They are labeled with a P on your card and they are a square shape. So pick out which brush you want to use. You want to get it wet because the watercolors that you are using are brand new and you probably haven't used them yet. So they're gonna feel dry and kind of sticky. So the first color I'm gonna start with is yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and get that wet. Mine have already been used, so they're a little bit more ready to go than yours might be. I'm gonna go ahead and paint a circle on my um, page in my sketchbook. And then I'm gonna wash out my brush really well. You, don't, you wanna to try to avoid mixing your colors on your paint palette here. You can mix colors over here if you need to. So try to avoid mixing them from um, spot to spot because it makes it a little bit harder to get clean colors. So I'm going to pick up some red next and I'm going to come over here and do the bottom corner of my triangle, washing out my brush. Now if your paint is already really wet, you can kind of dry off your brush before you get more paint. And this is the blue, this one right here next to the green. I actually accidentally picked up purple last time I did this. That's where I messed up the first time. So make sure you guys are paying attention to which colors you're picking up. I'm going to do blue in the bottom right hand corner of my triangle. And eventually this will make like a circle of shape. So those are primary colors. You don't need to mix anything to make them. Uh, primary colors just exist as they are. You'll notice if you ever order uh, printer ink for a printer, they come in very similar colors. The red looks a little bit more pink, but those are the colors that mix together to make all other colors. And you'll see how that works here as we continue on. So there's um, two ways you can mix these. You can mix them on your paper or you can mix them in your palette. I'm gonna show you both ways. So now we need to make our secondary colors. Now this kit is nice and it pr already provides you with those secondary colors already made if you need them. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can use both the already made and also mixing your own. So sometimes it's hard to get a good violet or good purple color. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the one they provide to make purple. Purple goes in between blue and red because that is what um, purple is made up of. So I'm going to go ahead and mix, uh, clean off my brush. So I'm going to show you how you can mix orange um, on your paper directly. So I'm going to pick up some yellow and make a spot, clean off my brush. And then I'm going to pick up some red. Red and yellow make orange. Now red is a pretty dominant color and it wants to kind of take over. So you might have to go back in with yellow to get it to the right orange shade. So I'm gonna go back to yellow and add some more yellow in here and mix it up really well. And it will make a better orange for you. Okay, so that's a pretty good orange. It's a little bit close on the card if I were to compare it to red orange, but I just need to make sure when I make red orange, it's gonna be um, a little bit more on the red side. So next I'm gonna show you how you can use your palette to mix um, a color as well. So we're gonna make green. So blue and yellow make green. So over here I'm gonna add some yellow to a spot. I already did it here, but I'll show you in a different spot. So there's some yellow, wash out my brush. I'm gonna get some blue and add it to my yellow. It's a pretty dark green. I maybe pick up some more yellow. Blue is also a dominant color. It wants to kind of take over sometimes. I'm gonna pick up a little more yellow. 
that's a little bit closer to the right green. And you can use your card to kind of compare and see if you get close. So there's green. So now we have the secondary colors made. So primary, secondary, secondary, it takes two colors to make it. So two primaries equal a secondary. So now I'll show you how to make the tertiary colors. Tertiary means three. So you have a primary plus a secondary. And since the secondary is two colors, you're technically using three colors to make it, if that makes sense. If you can't remember that, it's on the back of your card. Okay. So to make orange and yellow, to make yellow orange, primary is always said first. Um, you could use the pre-made colors of orange that you already have. So I'm gonna put down an orange first, make it a little bit faster. If you have the colors, you might as well use them. And then you uh, take some yellow and add yellow to your orange to lighten it up. Now, if it still doesn't look light enough, get a little bit more of the yellow and keep adding it until you get it to the point where you want it to be. It should look like a lighter orange color. And I could keep going if I want to. You can get it as light as you want. Okay. A safer bet might be mixing it in your palette if you don't know if you'll get it to the right shade because it's a little bit easier to mix there sometimes. So now I need to do red orange. So again, I'm gonna put down some orange and this time I'm gonna add some red to it. And as long as it looks like it exists in between these two colors, it's not quite red and it's not quite orange, it's in between, then you're good. It does not have to be perfect. Okay, now we're gonna do red violet or red purple, however you wanna say that. So I'm gonna get some violet. I'm gonna get some red and mix it on top because they are you're mixing the two colors um, that exist on either side to make the one in the middle. You could take this even a step further if you wanted to get even more detailed and mix red, violet, and red to make this one in between if you wanted to extend it out even more, but we won't go that far with this lesson. Just wanted to point that out that that is a possibility. So over here you do violet and blue. get blue violet and then you're gonna do blue and green to make blue green usually I like starting with the secondary and then mixing the primary on top but you don't have to do it that way as long as you get the right amount of paint on there um, blue green I almost grabbed yellow instead okay and then the last one is yellow green. So I'm gonna get some green, wash off my brush. Notice I'm washing my brush every time I switch the colors because I'm trying not to contaminate the colors that are in my palette. Oop. So there's my yellow green. So now I have a complete um, color wheel. I can label them with all the words if I want to. So I could do like yellow, I could write out yellow. I could do yellow orange. This is orange and I can label everything for future reference if I need to. I can also draw yourself the same triangle if you want to, to help your, you um, with your notes. So if you know, these are my secondaries. This is my upside down triangle, okay? We'll study these grays and neutral gray later. Right now, I just want you to concentrate on uh, practicing with your watercolor and also recreating a color wheel. Again, you don't have to recreate the same shapes as long as you're mixing the colors properly in your practice. If you have questions, please let me know.